A.A. Ron. Where is A.A. Ron right now? Hi everyone, my name is Aaron and welcome back to my channel. The topic I want to discuss today is why I believe it is completely inappropriate to compare Scientology to any of the world's major religions. This might seem like an obvious point that doesn't really need much discussion, but this inevitably comes up when I start talking about getting Scientology's tax-exempt status reviewed and revoked. It would be understandable if somebody thinks I'm approaching that conversation from the perspective of whether Scientology is a real religion or not a real religion. And whereas I have definite opinions on that subject, the fact is that is not the place from which I approach the conversation about whether Scientology should or should not have tax exempt status. Talking about whether a particular group or a particular set of beliefs meets the criteria for what is or is not a real religion gets into a lot of academic and legal debate, and I'm not an expert on any of those subjects. My opinions about Scientology are personal opinions. They are opinions formed from my lifelong involvement in Scientology. For those who may not be familiar with this channel, I was uh, essentially born and raised in Scientology. My mom got in when I was four. I officially left more or less around the age of 34. I'm now 41. By the time I left Scientology, I had spent half of my life actually working full time for Scientology. My opinion about Scientology is certainly an informed, what somebody might call an expert opinion. And yet I am not an expert on what, what criteria something would have to meet in order to officially or legally, I mean, and what does officially even mean anyway? Officially in the minds of scholars, officially in the minds of the judges of the courts, officially in the mind of the IRS? Because the fact is, in some ways, it seems like the IRS's opinion of what is or is not a real religion is uh, pretty much the only opinion that matters since that, that is what determines whether you get tax exemption. And yet let's examine that it's actually a misnomer or an incorrect idea that the IRS has determined or does determine what is or is not a real religion. The IRS's determination about whether an organization gets tax exempt status is not a determination about whether an organization is or is not a real religion. So when you hear people talking about getting Scientology's tax exempt status revoked, it might sound like we're having a conversation about trying to convince the IRS that Scientology is not in fact a real religion. And yet that is not what the conversation is. It is a conversation about whether Scientology is deserving of, is worthy of tax exempt status. That's a very specific conversation. The IRS doesn't actually decide who or what is or is not a religion. The IRS already took Scientology's tax exempt status away once. Many people don't actually know that. I promise you Scientologists definitely don't know that. Scientologists think that when the IRS granted Scientology tax exemption in 1993, most Scientologists think that was the first time that happened. Not true. Scientology used to have tax exempt status. There was a point where the IRS determined that L. Ron Hubbard was being personally enriched through Scientology and they took the exemption away. 1993 is when Scientology gained it back again. The IRS can also take it away again. But let's go back to the first statement I made in this video that I think it's important to discuss why it is completely inappropriate to compare Scientology to the world's major religions. Because that is what certain people start to do when this conversation about getting Scientology's tax exempt status revoked comes up. When I start talking about Scientology's tax exempt status, I start talking about things like the organization engaging in widespread human trafficking, the abuse of children, the abuse of the elderly, the financial fraud, the credit card fraud, the wire fraud. And inevitably, somebody will compare my discussion of abuses within Scientology with abuses that have occurred within or in the name of or under the umbrella of other religions. Obviously, bringing up abuse of children that has occurred in Christian and Catholic groups is a no-brainer. Scientology is so small and so new. Christianity and Catholicism are so large and are so old that any abuses one can point to that have occurred within the world of Scientology pale in comparison to similar abuses one could point to that have occurred within the worlds of Christianity and Catholicism. And I'm not picking on those two, but you can understand how those are the most obvious examples and the most common examples that people bring up in the context of this conversation. And actually, this act of conflating Scientology with the world's major religions, including them both in the same conversation, conflating 
conflating the idea of whether something should or should not be considered a religion, conflating that conversation with a conversation about whether something should or should not have tax exempt status. The conflating of these two things, this is what Scientology counts on. Now, since this video is called Scientology Cult vs. Religion, let's talk about that for a moment. Let's first touch on the highlights of what makes Scientology absolutely nothing like the world's major religions. For starters, Scientology does not believe in a supreme being. Scientology does not believe in any prophets. Scientology does not believe in a heaven or a hell. Scientology does believe, and they do recognize, that other people believe in these things. And within Scientology, they have a system that accounts for the fact that other people believe in these things. And Scientology calls their representation of this fact, their acknowledgement of this fact, the eighth dynamic. The fact that Scientology talks about this thing that they call the eighth dynamic is what Scientology uses to lie to people and convince people, and I guess by people I mean journalists and the courts and the IRS, that Scientology does in fact believe in God or allow for a belief in God. What Scientology knows and what they count on is the fact that you actually have to understand Scientology at a particular depth in order to know that this is a con. You have to understand Scientology down to a particular depth to understand that just because Scientology has what they call the eighth dynamic does not mean that Scientologists can believe in a supreme being. I will very briefly explain the way this works in Scientology. Hubbard says that all mankind as individuals are basically trying to exist. And essentially he says that in people's efforts to survive, there are basically eight different channels through which people direct their efforts of survival. And he calls these eight different channels the eight dynamics. The first dynamic is you yourself as an individual. If you're trying to survive on the first dynamic, you're worrying about your own personal survival. The second dynamic is the family unit. The third dynamic is literally any other group other than the specialized group of the family unit. The fourth dynamic is all mankind. So if you as an individual are focusing your efforts on forwarding the survival of the entire human race, that would be you trying to survive through the fourth dynamic or on the fourth dynamic. The fifth dynamic is all plant and animal non-human life. The sixth dynamic is the physical universe itself. So if you are someone who goes around trying to pretty things up in the environment and those things in the environment are not your own personal belongings because your personal belongings would fall into the first dynamic. If you're somebody who takes care of the well-being of physical objects that are not alive, that would be the sixth dynamic. The seventh dynamic is sort of you as a spirit or spirituality in general or collective spirituality. And Hubbard says the eighth dynamic he calls the infinity dynamic or the God dynamic. This is how Scientology tries to pull one over on people by saying Scientologists do believe in God. Or sometimes they say Scientology doesn't get into whether God exists or doesn't exist. Scientology only deals with dynamics one through seven and we leave the eighth dynamic up to you. Well, this is just a very convenient way for them to avoid having to actually say that the Scientology belief system itself is entirely inconsistent with any belief in a supreme being or a god. And without going into a very lengthy discussion on the subject, I can just tell you that in my 30 plus years in Scientology, I have never once heard any Scientologist profess a belief in a supreme being, even make mention of the possibility of a supreme being, and every single piece of knowledge I have ever learned in Scientology has always led me to believe it is literally entirely impossible and inconsistent for anything in Scientology to be reconciled with a belief in a supreme being. I promise you that if any Scientologist believed in God, somebody would have mentioned it in my general vicinity over a 30 plus year period. And I'm not even referring specifically to like the one God or the Abrahamic God. I just mean any God. Scientology is not consistent with a belief in a supreme being. All right, so aside from the fact that Scientology doesn't believe in a supreme being, doesn't believe in any prophets, doesn't believe in a heaven or a hell, there are two other very important ways in which Scientology is nothing like the world's major religions. Well, there are more than two, but there are two that I wanna highlight in this video, and those are Scientology's views on helping the less fortunate and Scientology's views on reporting crimes. As far as helping the less fortunate, I know that sounds crazy. You might be thinking, that has to be hyperbole. It is not. In Scientology, Hubbard talks extensively about the concept of exchange. Hubbard was infatuated with the idea of exchange. And Hubbard said that being out exchange, or as he defines it, receiving more than you give, 
is what makes people criminals. Hubbard said there were four conditions of exchange, and I'm reading here from an article that he wrote. He says, first consider a group which takes in money but does not deliver anything in exchange. This is called ripoff. It is the exchange condition of robbers, taxmen, governments, and other criminal elements. So in Scientology, they call this condition one exchange or criminal exchange or ripoff exchange. Hubbard says, second is the condition of partial exchange. The group takes in orders or money for goods and then delivers part of it or a corrupted version of what was ordered. This is called shortchanging or running into debt in that more and more is owed in service or goods by the group. He says the third condition is the exchange known legally and in business practice as fair exchange. One takes in orders and money and delivers exactly what has been ordered. Most successful businesses and activities work on the basis of fair exchange. He goes on, the fourth condition of exchange is not common, but could be called exchange in abundance. Here one does not give two for one or free service, but gives something more valuable than money was received for. The example he gives is, the group has diamonds for sale, an average diamond is ordered, the group delivers a blue-white diamond above average. Also, it delivers it promptly and with courtesy. Now, in this article that he's writing, he's talking about exchange because he's trying to tell Scientology staff members that which condition of exchange they practice is what determines the income of the organization. So he gives some examples here. If number one is in vogue, remember number one is criminal exchange or no exchange. If number one is in vogue, income will dry up with a thoroughness you would not believe. Although the TV and the movies try to tell one that robbery is the only way to get rich, this is not true. Those who engage in criminal exchange, whether they be stick up men, corporate con men or governments are not long for this world. The bigger the group, the longer it takes for it to fail, but fail it assuredly does. And the individual who takes but does not give ends up with a deep six in many ways quite rapidly. Deep six means death or total failure. So he goes on to give examples of how an organization can operate in condition two exchange, condition three, and condition four exchange. But note this sentence at the end here where he talks about an individual. An individual who takes but does not give ends up with a deep six in many ways quite rapidly. This idea that giving somebody something of value without receiving something of value in return not harmful to the person doing the giving, but harmful to the person receiving. This is how I was taught to think about giving money or food or help to the homeless when I was young. When I was young, I was in the Scientology organization in Philadelphia. There were homeless people everywhere. They were all over the place. The culture in Scientology, what we children were told by all of the Scientologists around us is that if you give money to homeless people, you are harming them, you are hurting them, you are turning them into criminals, you are making them criminal. This is what was dinged into my brain as a child, that it was wrong to give homeless people money because giving them something would make them feel degraded. It would be harmful to them spiritually. Realize this conversation had nothing to do with whether the homeless person would go spend that money on alcohol. This conversation had nothing to do with whether it's better to give them food instead of money because the food is what they really need. The money can either be stolen or misspent. No, 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 no. The conversation about why it was wrong was at the basic level of providing them something valuable harmed them because of the degrading aspect of receiving without giving. This even got so crazy that I would see some Scientologists, when they did choose to give somebody a dollar or two, make them do something in return, like smile or sing a song or something, with the idea that as long as they were at least trying to provide something of value in return, it would negate this aspect of enforcing criminal exchange upon the person. This concept in Scientology surrounding criminal exchange actually explains quite a lot of the odd behavior you see from Scientology, a lot of the non-churchy behavior that comes out of the Scientology world. There's no such thing as a Scientology soup kitchen. You don't see Scientologists going around to do anything to help the poor or help the community unless they're being followed by a camera crew. And that's because there's nothing inherently valuable in Scientology or inherently valuable to Scientologists about doing such work. So the only time you'll see them doing any kind of work like that is if they can figure out how to make it valuable to them. And the way they make that kind of a socially helpful work valuable to them is they turn it into a press release or they turn it into a video clip that they can use for fundraising. 
This is a key element to understand of what makes Scientology totally inappropriate to put into the same conversation as the world's major religions. Scientology does not believe in helping the less fortunate, period. So now let's talk about the second item that I mentioned, why it's totally inappropriate to compare Scientology to the world's major religions. The second item was how Scientology views the reporting of crimes. As I mentioned before, whenever the subject comes up of crimes that have been committed within the world of Scientology, someone tries to make a numbers to numbers comparison comparing Scientology and the world's major religions. And I have to tell you, when I talk about the subject of crimes in Scientology, I'm not talking about the numbers. I'm not talking about numbers to numbers. What separates the conversation about crimes committed within the world of Scientology from crimes committed by members of the world's major religions is that in Scientology, it is an offense to ever report a crime to the authorities. No matter what the crime, no matter the severity, no matter who the victim was, it is an offense punishable by expulsion to ever report a Scientologist to the authorities for any reason whatsoever. So we can talk all day about the hundreds of thousands or millions of children who have been abused by members of the world's major religions. And it goes without saying, those crimes are horrific. And the actions to cover up such crimes are horrific. There's absolutely nothing that will negate or take away from the horror of those crimes and the horror of that behavior. And as we've seen, such crimes have been systemically covered up by organizations of the world's major religions. And yet, if a member of Christianity or if a Catholic reports a crime by another Christian or another Catholic, they are not excommunicated, their family members are not forced to sever all ties with them, their Christian or Catholic employer is not forced to let them go, their child will not be banned or kicked out of any organizations that include or involve other Christians or other Catholics. This specific conversation is not about which religious group or religious organization or belief system has caused harm to the most amount of people. This is an examination of the fundamental policy of an organization. I'm gonna to read to you from Scientology's own book. This is called The Introduction to Scientology Ethics. And there's a chapter in here about high crimes. High crimes and suppressive acts are uh, two different words for the same thing. These are essentially things that you can be expelled from Scientology for. And on this list is, reporting or threatening to report Scientology or Scientologists to civil authorities in an effort to suppress Scientology or Scientologists from practicing or receiving standard Scientology. Now you see what they do there. They do this cute little thing where they add this modifier onto the second half of the sentence. So let's read it again. Reporting or threatening to report Scientology or Scientologists to civil authorities in an effort to suppress Scientology or Scientologists from practicing or receiving standard Scientology. Now, the reason why I say they do that cute little thing is because the way this actually gets uh, interpreted and implemented, the way Scientologists think about this is any effort to report or threaten to report Scientology or Scientologists to the civil authorities is an effort to suppress Scientology or Scientologists from practicing or receiving standard Scientology. And this is because Scientology believes that only Scientology procedures can remedy or fix bad or criminal behavior. They believe that there is no type of situation or crime where the correct application of Scientology is to involve the civil authorities or the police. It is always the correct application of Scientology to resort to Scientology procedures and Scientology solutions. So to a non-Scientologist or, you know, to the police or to the courts or to the judges, they might look at this and go, oh, but there's a modifying clause at the end of the sentence. It doesn't say you can't report anything to the civil authorities. It says it's only a crime to do that in an effort to suppress Scientology or Scientologists from practicing or receiving standard Scientology. And you go, yes, except any effort to report something to the authorities is considered an effort to suppress the practice of Scientology. Let's look at another one. Bringing civil suit against any Scientology organization or Scientologist, including the non-payment of bills or failure to refund, without first calling the matter to the attention of the International Justice Chief and receiving a reply. This is another example of them being cute about it, where technically what they don't clearly enunciate here is that the International Justice Chief will never give you a reply that says, yes, it's okay 
to sue another Scientologist. The only reason they even include anything at all about needing to receive a reply is so that you as a Scientologist know it's not enough just to inform the international justice chief that you want to sue another Scientologist. You have to wait for a reply. The unstated here, and this is where, because they know the courts aren't allowed to delve into this, the courts aren't allowed to investigate this or research it further. The unstated is that yes, you have to wait for a reply, and the reply that you get will always say that you do not have permission to sue another Scientologist. Let's look at another one here. Delivering up the person of a Scientologist without justifiable defense or lawful protest to the demands of civil or criminal law. Get a load of that one. If the police or the FBI is looking for a Scientologist, it is a crime punishable by expulsion for a Scientologist to deliver up the person of a Scientologist without justifiable defense or lawful protest to the demands of civil or criminal law. That is an all-encompassing rule. It does not matter the nature of the criminal offense. We are gonna see the ramifications of this play out in the Danny Masterson trial. We are going to see the lengths that Scientology and Scientologists went to to obstruct justice in the Danny Masterson case. And so for all those who feel it is appropriate to bring the world's major religions into the conversation when discussing whether Scientology's tax-exempt status should be revoked, I ask you, are you aware of any Christian or Catholic churches, groups, organizations that have written rules that state, if you as a member of our group report any other member of our group to the authorities for harming children, you will be expelled from our group. Are you aware of any such constructs that exist in any organizations related to the world's major religions? Someone in the world of Christianity or Catholicism, you know, there might be some social stigma with having reported one of your local religious leaders for abusing children. I, I understand the social dynamic involved and perhaps the, the social pressure to keep things quiet or handle things internally. But do you know of any organization other than Scientology that in writing says, if you report another member to the authorities for any reason, you're going to be expelled? I am not aware of any. If other people have knowledge of other organizations, religious organizations that have rules like this, let me know about it in the comments down below. All right, so a quick recap. On the one hand, we have a conversation about is Scientology a cult or a religion? And on the other hand, we have a conversation about does it really matter if Scientology is considered a cult or a religion by academics or scholars or the courts or the IRS? Does that actually matter when having the conversation about getting Scientology's tax exempt status revoked. Here's what Scientology hangs its hat on when claiming to be a religion. Scientology believes in the immortal spiritual being that they call a Thetan. They believe that only through the process of Scientology auditing can the Thetan be rehabilitated back to its native godlike powerful state. And even though I believe that Scientology is a destructive cult that destroys families, that abuses children, that abuses the elderly, that engages in human trafficking, that engages in widespread credit card fraud, wire fraud associated with money laundering, even though I believe all of these things, Scientology still genuinely holds these beliefs about the immortal Thetan and the process of auditing. Those are genuinely held beliefs. So when having the conversation about whether an organization, in this case Scientology, is a religion or a cult, do you make that determination based on the organization's genuinely held beliefs or do the crimes of the organization factor into that conversation? And my opinion is that the crimes of the organization factor into the conversation about whether they are worthy of tax exempt status. It doesn't really have anything to do with whether the organization is a religion or a cult. Do I think Scientology is a cult? Absolutely. Do I think that just because something is a cult means it's not also a religion? No, I'm not so sure there's a distinction there. Do I think that just because something is a religion means it should have tax exempt status? No, absolutely not. The IRS doesn't think that way. Not everything that meets the definition of a religion gets tax exemption. That's not how the IRS looks at these issues. And yet Scientology is very much banking. They are counting on the fact that other religious organizations, other Christian groups, Catholic groups, Jewish, Muslim groups, Scientology is counting on all of those groups 
being tricked into thinking, oh my goodness, if we let the government go after Scientology, we could be next. And that's why I believe it is such an important message to keep harping on and dinging and dinging and dinging in. That Scientology as a belief system, Scientology as an organization, Scientology in terms of its policies has absolutely no relation to, absolutely no similarities to any of the world's major religions. Organizations dedicated to and devoted to defending religious liberty in this country must not be tricked into buying into the slippery slope argument that if the IRS goes after Scientology, it might go after Christianity next. It might go after Catholicism. It might go after Judaism. It might go after Islam. Scientology is counting on that slippery slope argument. Organizations associated with the world's major religions provide, as a matter of their core faith, they provide services to the community and the underprivileged that provide a public benefit to society. Scientology is nothing like that. Scientology not only doesn't provide a public benefit to society, it actually considers helping the underprivileged to be a criminal, destructive activity. When I talk on this subject for a while, I have a tendency, I'm, I start repeating myself and I start making the same points over and over again, and I don't wanna keep doing that. I've covered a lot of ground in this video. Please share with me your thoughts on what I've discussed here in the comments down below. I mean, the question of is Scientology a cult or a religion? That's an easy one. Almost everybody comes down on the side of Scientology being a cult. I certainly do. And yet I come to that conclusion for my own personal reasons. And I have to acknowledge that I'm not even sure I understand what the litmus test is in the world of academia and scholarship or in the courts or even the IRS. I'm not even sure that I know what the litmus test is for, okay, legally, what is a religion and what is a cult? And yet at the same time, I believe that the conversation about cult versus religion is actually irrelevant when we're having the conversation about revoking Scientology's tax exemption. If Scientology's exemption gets revoked, it's not gonna be because the IRS said, oops, we made a mistake, Scientology is a cult. I genuinely don't believe the IRS makes a distinction between cult and religion. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Let me know what you think about anything I've covered in this video down below. And based on your comments, I will probably do a part two follow-up of this video. For those of you who may not be regular viewers of this channel, have you heard I'm running for Clearwater City Council? I live in Clearwater, Florida, home of the largest Scientology organization in the world. And I'm running for city council to stand up for our citizens and fight back in the war Scientology is waging against our city. If you want Clearwater to have a council member who is doing something about Scientology's human trafficking, crimes against children, and crimes against the elderly, if you want Clearwater to have a council member who will not rest until Scientology's tax-exempt status is revoked, please consider supporting my campaign at AaronForClearwater.com. Thank you all. Thank you to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!